Hi there. Welcome back to my channel. If you have been keeping up with the new developments in the machine learning space, you might have heard about uh, this new model that Facebook has released or Meta has released, which is called uh, Llama or L-L-A-M-A. -A. So if you take a look at their uh, website, it explains that this is uh, a large language model and it was trained on more than 65 billion parameters. And there are different uh, versions of uh, this. So uh, they have made Llama available in different sizes. It is uh, available in 7 billion parameters, 13 billion parameters, 33 billion parameters, and uh, 65 billion parameters as well. So uh, they also talk about certain uh, other pieces in this, uh, in this blog uh, that they have written. So they have trained uh, Llama on 65 billion uh, parameters and uh, with 1.4 trillion tokens. And even the smallest model that they have trained has, uh, uh, has over 1 trillion tokens and it uses uh, more than 7 billion parameters. So they talk about a few risks in this uh, blog afterwards and uh, they have released this in a non-commercial license. Now, this paper was released uh, on uh, February 24th, so which means it has already been around uh, a month, more than a month since this paper was released. But now people have gotten uh, a Llama on their hands and they have started installing and, uh, you know, playing around uh, with this model. And yesterday there was a debate all over the internet uh, on how this model uses less than six gigabytes of RAM. So if you take a look at, uh, I think I had my Twitter open for that yet. So if you do a quick search of MMAP for, uh, on Twitter, you will see these discussions that were happening yesterday. So here people were questioning how, uh, you know, uh, AI engineers uh, don't know about uh, system engineering stuff and they have come to know about it uh, yesterday. So uh, there are some, uh, nitty gritty details into this and I don't think they have solved the complete puzzle yet but it was interesting uh, to me because it touches a part from my previous experience. So some of you know I have worked at MongoDB for a very long time and uh, you know I was very enthusiastic about MongoDB and undoubtedly MongoDB is one of the most famous database companies out there. But when I started learning MongoDB back in 2015 uh, there was uh, this storage engine which was called mmap v1 storage engine so if you go to mongodb's documentation you will see this storage engine and at the top you will see that the documentation is archived and it is no longer supported because mmap v1 storage engine uh, was removed from mongodb afterwards uh, in the newer versions of mongodb i think after 4.0 or something uh, this storage engine was removed but uh, a new storage engine was introduced back in 3.0, but before that MongoDB was solely based on top of uh, MMAP v1 storage engine. And this MMAP v1 storage engine was basically uh, basically an improvement over uh, the MMAP operating system call. So uh, many of you may have uh, used this call uh, or you may have heard about this uh, in, in your uh, in your uh, academics or jobs. So this basically maps the pages of memory. So that's what MMAP stands for. And what happens is that uh, it creates, uh, you know, a mapping between the process and the address space. So, sorry, here, if we go to this, so what happens is that uh, it creates, you know, a map between uh, the process's own address space process address space uh, and the and the file that it is trying to access. So in case of MongoDB, for example, uh, this could have been a database file that you are trying to access. So if, if you were trying to access a DB file, uh, this would be, uh, you know, mapped uh, onto the process, right? So the benefit is uh, that when you do this, your database 
need and if your database needs to access a certain page it can look in its virtual memory space and it can let the os fetch uh, it from the uh, from, uh, from the disk and os takes care of all the internals it just does an mmap call on on that so all these uh, all the addresses for that file are basically mapped in the virtual memory and that is why one of the limitations that used to exist back in uh, MongoDB when 32-bit systems were still in use. So with 32-bit systems, you could only map up to four gigabytes of uh, address space and MongoDB used to limit that uh, to two gigabytes of file size. So that was two to the power 32. Uh, you could go up to four gigabytes, but then some part of it was reserved by the kernel, etc. And MongoDB would, you know, limit you to using around two gigabytes of file size if you were using 32 bit systems now this is this was a problem with 32 bit systems but uh, and 10 years back also uh, 32 bit systems were going out of uh, out of fashion and uh, 64 syst bit systems were quickly catching up so with 64 bit systems this uh, address space is basically unlimited and uh, you you can uh, access a huge volume of data using to look at uh, this thread this is uh, when people raise this issue on github that when they are uh, trying to run uh, a 30 billion uh, parameters model it is using only 6 gigabytes of space less than 6 gigabytes of space on ram and they were not able to understand it and uh, then there was a very long discussion on this github thread around uh, around this piece you know uh, so if you see here yeah so i have been i have only been playing with 30 billion models so far and since neither 7 billion or 30 13 billion uh, parameters were engaging as yes as recently as yesterday 30 billion model filled just close to 30 gigabytes but today's release now runs fine with less than 6 6 gigabytes right Initially, they thought it was a bug, but uh, then uh, then they started, you know, uh, running their queries on top of uh, the model, and it was not. They could not notice any quality loss in the responses, so they wanted to understand more reasoning around uh, this piece. So later on, uh, here, uh, the author of uh, this uh, uh, this fix. Uh, got into the uh, thread and uh, they described it here. So I'm glad you're happy with the fact that uh, Llama 30 billion parameters can be evaluated with only four gigabytes of memory usage. The thing that makes this possible is that we are using MMAP to load models, right? So this lets the this lets us load the read only weights into memory without having to read them or even copy them. Right? So you basically create a virtual uh, address space. So what they are doing here is they are creating a virtual address space. So when you run this process, which is running this model, so this model resides on disk. And you have this process here which is uh, which is trying to access this uh, uh, this model so it sends an mmap call to this model file right and because it sends an mmap call the process only keeps a track of this in in its in its address space it does not have to copy the file in its entirety and it does not have to access the files in the file in its entirety so when the process then runs it it asks for a certain page of data and when that page is not found in uh, in its memory in the physical memory it results into what is called a page fault and page faults are very common uh, term in uh, in systems language and if you have worked with mongodb back in the day you would be taking care of uh, this this metric as well so a lot of page faults would happen so page fault basically means that uh, it has to you know uh, get that page from the disk and get that back into the into the memory so this is how uh, they think that the model is accessing uh, the data so the 
mo the most interesting element of this was the use of uh, mmap in order to load the data now many people confused this with compression of the model itself so they were thinking that model is getting into the memory and it is somehow getting compressed in the memory which is not right uh, this mmap actually creates only a virtual address space and it does not need the entire thing uh, to get into memory and that is what was happening more likely so uh, so the author of uh, this uh, you know this fix explains about uh, this in the uh, in the github thread and they they have also created a tool which allows uh, you know to evaluate this to some extent and here when they run the tool so they see that there are four uh, there are 400000 page faults so they mentioned that with, since there are 400000 page faults uh, which are happening which means that only 1.6 gigabytes of data of the 20 gigabyte weights file so there is a weights file uh, if you have worked with machine learning models uh, there are weights and there are uh, these uh, parameters and hyperparameters and multiple other things so when you are accessing the weights uh, file out of the 20 gigabyte of weights file only 1.6 uh, gigabyte was needed for x for for their query that they had done for example what is the best in life right so when they ran this query against the model only 1.6 gigabyte of data was required uh, by the model so now uh, then then they go on and ex uh, to explain this uh, since my change is so new it is possible that my theory is wrong and this is just a bug i don't actually understand the inner workings of llama 30 billion well enough to know why it is sparse so many people uh, thought okay now this is a weights file uh, it is getting only 1.6 gigabytes into memory what is happening why doesn't it take a look at all the weights now people feel uh, that maybe the weights are sparse uh, sparse means that to me uh, and i am not a machine learning expert i think uh, that some of those values are not required uh, by the model to run and uh, even the author for uh, you know for this fix does not actually uh, you know know for sure why it is happening right so there are a lot of intricacies involved in, involved in that piece yeah so here it talks about uh, one, one of uh, the participants in the thread has talked about uh, this as well uh, they say this is very intriguing but unless i am reading this discussion wrong there is a claim that not all weights are being read uh, eventually during a forward pass so forward pass again is a terminology in the machine learning uh, models where uh, you are taking a you know you're taking a pass through the neural network but uh, the most relevant point here is that it is not taking into account all the weights are that all the weights that are available to the file right so people are still trying to figure out uh, why it is happening some people believe that uh, we are measuring the wrong aspects of the system and it is actually happening so that is still uh, to be determined maybe we get to that point and uh, you know this thread uh, is very interesting to me and uh, i really look forward to keep an eye on the final progress on this thread and maybe also try out llama myself you know another thing that you should keep in mind uh, here uh, is that uh, mmap v1 and this was true with uh, uh, mongodb as well i am talking about mongodb because that's uh, you know easier to understand if you have worked with databases so it would talk about that at the end of this so with mmap v1 uh, mongodb actually uses all free memory on the machine as its cache system resource monitors show that mongodb uses a lot of memory but its usage is dynamic if another process suddenly needs half the server's ram mongodb will yield cache memory to other process right this is important uh, to understand from mmap perspective uh, and that is happening that is true for llama as well because it is uh, using mmap so if you had like multiple processes of llama in this case running on the same server then they would be competing for that uh, operating system uh, you know ram that is uh, that that is there so if you are running only one 
uh, Llama process, there is a possibility that the entire 30 GB RAM or 32 GB RAM that you have on the system gets filled up, right? Because uh, because the operating system just gets pages into the uh, into the memory and it does not have to evacuate those pages from uh, or evict those pages from memory until it is until it requires that space for something else, right? So if you had multiple processes running on the system, uh, then they would compete for that. Obviously, uh, your processes will uh, look a little slower because if they need to run, uh, if they need to uh, uh, read those uh, those weights from the file, then in that case, uh, they will have to uh, they will have to read them from the disk. It will result into page faults. They will have to read it from the disk and then get it into memory, and that can really slow down the entire process. Right. So uh, again, uh, this is interesting on, on, on all the stuff that is going on around uh, this and uh, I look forward to uh, keep an eye on uh, on how it uh, how how it goes from here and uh, I'll keep you informed on uh, this in my next video uh, as well now before we uh, before we end this video one uh, one thing that I do want you to uh, take into account is that uh, while MMAP wa worked well for MongoDB in the initial years, uh, MongoDB later on replaced uh, that MMAP V1 storage engine with what is called a Wired Tiger storage engine, uh, which is a much more sophisticated storage engine than what a single MMAP call uh, to the operating system could do. And there were obviously some performance uh, challenging uh, challenges uh, in the uh, in in the MMAP storage engine and. Uh, if you have followed MongoDB uh, like back in uh, version 3.0 uh, up to version 3.0, uh, then you would remember that uh, that MongoDB could only get up to collection level uh, locks. Whereas uh, when WireTiger Storage Engine was introduced, uh, they were able to get uh, atomicity on uh, you know on 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 a document level. They were able to get the locking uh, up, up to a document level. Right, so that was very important move uh, in the Mongo MongoDB ecosystem. I have written about that. I have written about the storage engines uh, in uh, in one of my documents that I will share with you, uh, where you can read about this uh, a little more. Uh, but uh, there is there is a paper from uh, uh, from uh, the Carnegie Mellon University uh, from. Uh, uh, from some database experts, and uh, they call this paper. Are you sure uh, you want to use MMAP in your database management system, right? And this was, uh, and the, and there is a video as well. If you want to take a look at this, this is a very interesting video, uh, which basically asks you not to consider using MMAP uh, for building your uh, building your databases, right? So if you are building a modern database, there is less likelihood that you would see. Uh, MMAP being uh, used for uh, the memory management in databases, but it works fine for, uh, say, machine learning models like uh, Llama. And we just need to find how the internal machine learning model, what is the uh, workload access pattern that model has. And in case of machine learning, because these models are so complicated with uh, so many billions of parameters, uh, it's very difficult to understand uh, what it is doing at the file level, how it is accessing and which parameters within the uh, within the entire parameter set uh, does it need to access. So anyways, we will talk about, we'll continue talking about uh, these pieces and uh, yeah, l let me know your thoughts of, uh, thoughts in the comments and how you found this video and how we can improve uh, in future. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Take care.